This is the Chroma E22 Pro, and this is the Chroma E68 Pro electric scooter. We have two questions to answer in this video. What's the difference between the two, and which one should you buy? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to DIY Reading. My name is Reed, and if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Now, I've already reviewed both of these electric scooters individually in previous videos on my channel. So this video won't be going as far into the details like I did in those videos, this is more of a video to compare the two scooters to help you decide on which one to purchase. When I first started looking at scooters, I was trying to decide which electric scooter to get and did I want to spend a little bit more money to get one that may be a little bit faster or did I want to save a little bit of money to get one that's a little bit cheaper and maybe that one's just fine. I will link both of the review videos on these scooters in the description below. I will also put one right here, I think it's on this one right here, I'll put it up here so that way if you're interested in checking out the review videos, you can do that at a later time. Both of these scooters have the option to come in different colors. Both come in a glossy black, blue, or silver. But the E22 Pro also has a matte black, while the E68 Pro does not have that option. Well, at least doesn't have it currently. The price difference between these two is a little less than $200. The E22 comes in at $269, while the E68 comes in at $399. While $399 is quite a bit of money to spend, especially if it's your first scooter, that's why I make this video, so that way you can decide on which one you feel like best fits your needs as well as the pricing budget. I will leave links to both of them in the description below as I know the price can fluctuate. Just looking at the two scooters standing side by side, you can't tell too much of a difference other than the optional seat comes with the E68 Pro. Now, this optional seat you can remove, it just removes by four bolts, or you can put it back on with the four bolts provided. To tell you the truth, I took mine off I'm not really, I never really wanted to use it. It does take up a little bit of space on the platform itself where you stand. So it was kind of in the way when I wasn't using it. I didn't use it, didn't really care for using it. So I removed mine. With both of these scooters side by side, you'll notice that the tires are a little bit different. The E22 Pro has nine inch tires, while the E68 Pro has 10 inch tires. The nine inch tires are a little bit more smooth on the sides, while the 10 inch tires have these little indentions all the way around. I think the indentions, they actually help out with the smoothness and I think they take away from all the vibration of the road. Well, not all of it, but I think they help with the vibration at least. It's not a huge difference, but when it comes to scooters, the larger tire does offer a smoother ride. While the 10 inch tires make this E68 Pro look a little bit taller, with those two key things out of the way, just looking at the scooters, it's hard to tell them apart. Okay, the two I have, if it weren't for the two different colors, it would be tough to tell them apart by just looking at them. They look very similar from the handlebars to the handlebar controls to the braking system, all the way down to the stand or the wide standing platform and the rear suspension. Both of these scooters ride pretty close to the same, with the exception of the E68 Pro. It has, in its higher gear, it accelerates a little bit faster than the E22 Pro. It's a small difference, but it is noticeable. The E68 Pro can carry up an incline a little bit faster than the E22 Pro, mainly because of the 500 watt motor versus the 350 watt motor, but both of them, it helps if you get a little bit of speed before you go up a larger hill. The E68 Pro will top out at about 20 miles per hour, while the E22 Pro tops out at about 15.5 miles per hour. I'm not sure why Corona put the 15.5 mile an hour restriction on the E22 Pro, because I know that there are other e-scooters or electric scooters out there that have a 350 watt motor as well that can go about 19 to 20 miles per hour. It could be due to the battery longevity. I'm not really sure on that. With all that being said, there are a few more things that make these two scooters different from each other. The E22 Pro has a max range of 20 miles, while the E68 Pro has a max range of 25 miles. So even with a more powerful motor, the E68 Pro, it also has a larger battery capacity. The E22 Pro has a max weight limit of 265 pounds, while the 68 Pro or the E68 Pro has a max weight limit of 300 pounds. So clearly the E68 Pro can carry a heavier person if they need to. The weight of the rider does determine a lot of what the scooter can do, but don't let that deter you from the E22 Pro. With me, I'm about 220 pounds. Other than a little bit faster acceleration and a top speed, the E22 Pro does just fine with me on it. There is a little bit of noticeable weight difference between the two scooters. The E22 Pro is weighing in at about 44 pounds and the E68 Pro is about 51 pounds. Maybe a little bit less if you take the, the little seat off. So here are my final thoughts on these two scooters. I've had a blast on both of them. In all reality, 
I have a lot more time on the E22 Pro than I have with the E68 Pro, just because of the fact that I've had it a little bit longer. Um, the 15.5 mile an hour top speed is not a huge deal. I usually end up, before I got the E68 Pro, I ended up riding that while my other friends rode the other ones that were a little bit faster. And really, I was basically with them the whole time. I was up with them. Well, of course I was with them. But they weren't cruising up way ahead of me at all times. So it really wasn't a huge disadvantage. I mean, it was a couple of miles an hour slower, but that couple of miles an hour slower is not going to be the difference of you not seeing them anymore, or it's all just going to be they're just a little bit ahead of you on certain things. Now, the E68 Pro, it obviously can go up to about 20 miles an hour, which like uh, the High Boy S2 and the S2 Pro can go about 19, 20 miles an hour as well. Um, so that gets up to the speed with those. But look at the price. I mean, obviously the High Boy 2 price is, or the Pro is up there too. But the price is a little bit different, a little bit higher. Honestly, and I hate to say this because I think people will think that I'm just saying this, but whichever one you choose, you're going to have fun on. And which one, whichever one you choose, I would choose it based on what you can afford. So if you can afford the $400 one, the 68 Pro, by all means, go ahead. They even have a C1 that goes 25 miles, I think it's 25 or 30 miles an hour. If you can afford that, go ahead, go ahead and buy that. I would buy the one that you can afford. If you're on a budget, the, e or the E22 Pro is going to be just fine. Um, now, I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, on the longevity, uh, as far as the long, how far, not the longevity, but how far the battery goes, I've never really ran into a situation where I'm like, man, I wished I had a little bit longer battery life. Obviously, if you're wanting to drive this 24, 23 miles, you're probably going to pick the little bit larger battery life one. But at about that distance, you're probably getting to a point where after riding these for a couple of years, that battery life is going to diminish a little bit. So probably wouldn't ride it 25 plus mile now, miles or 25 plus miles all the time. So like I said, just get the one where your budget allows. Uh, if you really want the 20 mile an hour uh, top speed, then spend a little bit more money. The 15.5 is just fine. If you found this video helpful, please leave me a like and feel free to ask any questions down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear which one are you going to choose? If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more tech reviews, home automation, and home and automotive how-to videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.